Okay, this video is about the gong. Um, in band or orchestral literature, you will see the instrument either uh, called for the gong or the tam-tam. In a uh, strict musicological sense, this instrument is not a gong. A gong, by definition, has a definite pitch, uh, whereas the tam-tam is a white noise instrument. However, uh, overwhelmingly, the indication in a Western score for gong or tam-tam usually means this instrument. So this is the largest gong that we have here at school. Uh, this is a full-size concert gong, 36 inches. You can get uh, specialized instruments uh, that are much larger, 40, 60, 80, 80 inch gongs. There's, you know, a half dozen of those in the world. Um, or much smaller all the way down to 12 inches or smaller. So we have a couple of different size gongs here at school, but the concert uh, gong, 36 inches, is the standard one. So that's the one that we'll play on here. Again, this is a white noise instrument. It is not used to play a specific pitch, but it uh, functions similarly to cymbals in that it is a large white noise effect element. Um, so you are typically going to play it with a very large beater. This is the largest percussion beater we have. And you'll see that it's fairly square, unlike bass drum beaters, which are typically round. Bass drum beaters are usually not suitable for playing on the gong because the cores are too hard and not heavy enough. So uh, typically you will stand uh, sideways to the instrument just like when you were playing the concert bass drum, more or less the exact same technique. So you're not going to play it by standing in front of the instrument and hitting behind it unless you're in uh, certain situations. Now this is important. It is possible to break this instrument and the uh, primary way that you do that is by striking it dead center. You never want to strike a gong, uh, a tam tam, a, uh, a non-pitched tam or gong dead center. That will cause the instrument to crack. The place that you want to hit it, usually they will have uh, lathed a central section, uh, especially gongs that come from China like these, or Chinese style gongs. And so you want to strike in the center of the lathe section. You don't want to strike all the way down at the edge and you definitely don't want to strike in the middle. The other thing that you want to do uh, with a gong, and you can also do this with crash cymbals and some other instruments as well, is you want to do what's called warming it up. We do not want to strike the metal from a point of zero vibration. That will also make the metal susceptible to cracking even if you strike it in the right spot. So what you want to do is you want to get the metal to vibrate just a tiny, tiny bit before you strike it. So before you hit a big gong note, you can just take your fingers and run your fingers on the gong so that you get a, an almost inaudible amount of sound, but now the gong is activated and now I will strike. And I'll strike nice and easy so I don't overwhelm the thumb here. If you need to mute the gong, you will almost always have to do that with both sides of your body because of the size of the instrument. All right, so use the side of your leg and then your arm depending on what the hanger or stand will allow you to do. Um, the gong is a very rich instrument, and the more louder you play it, uh, you'll get sort of different levels of blossoming. So I'll take you through a couple of those here real quick. Again, just a couple real quick examples of the blossoming. I'm going to stop just real quick because my phone is about to die, so let me plug in my charger. Give me just a second there, sorry folks. Okay, so that's the typical strike with a single mallet again. Uh, halfway between the center and the edge, usually in the middle of the lathe section. And if you want, you can warm you can warm the instrument up either with your fingers or by striking it very, very gently. Again, we're not trying to create any audible sound. We're just trying to get the instrument activated a little bit. If you need to play a roll, then you get a matched set of beaters. And then typically you will roll here and here 
but with one hand on the opposite side of the instrument. So just like timpani and we talked about with uh, suspended cymbal, we want to try to activate as much of the instrument as possible. So we'll roll on both sides of the plate. let it go. Again, very, very slow single stroke roll. Um, a couple of other effects that you might run into. There are calls, especially in the mid-century band literature, to play gongs with snare drum sticks, and you can either do that on the face of the gong, or perhaps more typically on the, the edge that's folded over. Just so you get a very, very high metallic sound. You may also be asked to strike or scrape the gong with a hard plastic or acrylic mallet. Or, more common, to strike or scrape with either a triangle beater or a coin or some other thin piece of metal. So you might see uh, indications for tam scrapes or gong scrapes. Just to, just to show you as an example, um, especially the larger the gong, you want to make sure that you have appropriate beaters. So even if I take a hard, uh, uh, sorry, if I take a large soft marimba mallet, it just doesn't have enough mass to activate the instrument. Alright, so you have all, all the sort of mid and high overtones, but none of the, none of the low depth and Right, so here's again with the yarn mallet versus the actual tan mallet. Alright, so that's a little bit about playing gongs and tams.